Hi, um, so this is a video, it's a long time since I've done a video here, but uh, this is a video reply to, to uh, Derived Energy's video to, to Be Serious, and she's telling him about the tremendous amount of logical fallacies in his thinking. He says, well, I don't see it, it's just logical induction. Well, first of all, there's a whole bunch of argument that you can't decide for other people. You can't decide for other people's bodies. It is objectively better to get exercise, therefore I can tell other people when to exercise. It doesn't work like that. So there's a huge body of work about individual rights that involve your ability to control what you do with your own body as the ultimate, ultimate arbiter. And you're saying, no, you're more ultimate than that ultimate. Well, no. You're not familiar with the idea that people should make decisions for themselves? You don't know about that? You think that we're still in the world where we've proven that one person can deduce the proper thing and then impose that? You don't know the arguments against that. You're not even familiar with them. Um, well, there's a few, uh, and you're also not evidently aware of the problems with objective classification. See, you think that uh, boundaries, you just assume the classical boundaries with sharp edges like life either is or isn't worth living. We can decide one or other. That's not how categories work. Categories work by radio principles. So at the most you could decide your life isn't worth living. You cannot decide that for someone else. Your idea that things fit into categories is leaving, leading you to all sorts of confusion, like you seek to classify the new life as just either it is its own self or it isn't. But we all know that when it's a fetus, it's arguably a part of the mother's body. It's also arguably something independent through the fact that its potential is to become independent. There isn't a clear either or. Both of those interpretations are valid and, and bear uh, relevancy to to different issues and you seek to just think that there's one absolute answer and you can derive from it you know and you guys pat yourself on the back an awful lot I mean it's funny because metamorph in that video is patting himself on the back about how we give up and we just say eventually we don't want to talk about it well he, you know they're the ones that have me blocked antinatalists are the ones that have me blocked right now so I'm having a feeling that they're not too into the let's still talk about it thing. Yeah. Ultimately, I mean, I think the bigger thing, I mean, that's the huge logical problem, but I think the bigger thing is they just don't realize that this idea that life is a risk, therefore there's no reason to take it, is based on an idea that risks are not worth taking. Any risk is not worth taking. What's to argue about that? It's obviously axiomatic. You should never take a risk. That's not how life works. That's not how everybody's living. That's not obvious. It's about as true as you should always take a risk. See, again, this comes down to the role of individual decision-making. When to take a risk or not. Individual decision. You just don't get that individuals get to make individual decisions. So, yeah, it's a pretty big, blatant fallacy. In fact, it's the one behind all of this meddling and getting in other people's business that is making this world so shitty that is the closest you'll get to justifying your position. In other words, you're making the world shitty. Now, I think the main thing to be taken seriously is you guys would have to deal with uh, William P. Brain's argument that thinking that life is unfairly imposed actually increases suffering because it is known that neurologically to have that attitude increases the actual subjective intensity of pain. So why don't you deal with that? Why don't you deal with why you're justified to have an opinion that increases your own pain? If pain is an objective negative, then that shouldn't be the case, right? There should be no justification to doing something that increases your own or other people's suffering, and this attitude does. If you convince people of this attitude, the suffering they're currently feeling will become more intense, which according to you guys is more objectively wrong. But you don't see any argument that you have to answer, huh?
So, yeah, I think there, there's a few things um, for you to address that you guys just ignore and go on about. Um, we haven't even gotten into this fact that you all are bound, and it's surprising because many of you have actually come out on this side of the position, Gary, and et cetera, that the pain that someone feels because they've done something wrong that backfires, uh, that, that that's, doesn't matter. Yet Gary says, well, the value of the pain in the Nazis that he might reflect, but you don't have to reflect. You know it's objectively wrong as soon as you feel the pain. You don't have to think about why. Oh, yeah, you do. Is that the thing? You guys don't want to think about why you had pain. Maybe you're responsible for more of it than you like to admit. Yeah, more of your own pain. I think so.